Yes, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm Michał Rostecki, and I would like to talk about the project Loxy, which is trying to contain the containers which do not contain. Uh, before I dig into the project, a bit about myself. Uh, I'm Michał Rostecki. My nickname in open source communities is Wadorowski. Uh, I'm a software engineer at DeepFence, and nowadays I write mostly in Rust, and it became my favorite language, although I have a huge background in Go, C, and Python. What? Oh, really? Oh. Oh, okay. I apologize for that. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was the first slide. This was about me. And, yeah, here uh, on this collocated event, we talk about container security. The fact that we have this collocated event proves so much how this space is emerging and how much good progress we have here. Although I must say that uh, the most of initiatives and most of projects in Kubernetes about security are focusing either on securing Kubernetes API or uh, finding vulnerabilities in images. And uh, the project I'm going to talk about is trying to cover the other area. It's, it's trying to cover container runtimes and everything which is closer to the Linux kernel and try to enforce security policies there. And um, it also aims to do it in run, container runtime agnostic and container engine agnostic way in the long term. Uh, you've probably heard a lot about eBPF, either on KubeCon or in a Kubernetes-related conference. But uh, to briefly describe it, uh, it's a technology coming from the Linux kernel uh, which allows to run sandbox programs inside the Linux kernel. And those programs are triggered by various events. It can be the event of uh, calling a kernel function. It can be an event related to uh, incoming network packet in the system. And eBPF is event-driven. So eBPF allows you to write programs which are triggered by specific kernel event, uh, which gets the context of that event and does something with it. And eBPF is already has many years. It's widely adopted. There is the most known project called Cilium, which is uh, using it with great success for, um, for networking, for Kubernetes networking. Uh, there are also several projects, for example, Project Falco, which is leveraging it for uh, observing potentially malicious behavior in the system. Uh, although there are many security projects which already use eBPF for observing the events and uh, malicious behavior, the question is whether eBPF could be used also for preventing such behavior and, and actually enforcing policies and um, cutting off the attacker from the containers. And before I come with straightforward answer to that question, uh, I will explain the, another concept in the Linux kernel, uh, which is called LSM, which stands for Linux Security Modules. And most of you probably know the two popular security systems in Linux. One is S-Linux, the other is AppArmor. And both of them are built on top LSM. And LSM is an API in the kernel which provides various hooks inside the Linux kernel, which let programmers, which let developers of security systems to decide whether some particular action is allowed to happen. And huge examples of LSM hooks are, there's a LSM hook for opening a file. So, for example, as a Linux or AppArmor are triggered by the event when you are opening some file in the operating system, it's getting uh, the data what the file is, who is initiating that uh, uh, file opening action, and based on that, security systems are making a decision uh, whether it's, uh, it looks safe to them 
or whether it's a malicious behavior and um, they want to deny it. And well, for the most of time, um, development of Linux security modules involved either writing your kernel module, which uh, would have to be loads with lsmall, for example, or um, contributing to the Linux kernel source tree. And as Linux and AppArmor actually have um, kernel modules inside the upstream kernel source code. So they are developed together with the uh, Linux kernel uh, developers, uh, patches of SLinux and Armor developers are eventually uh, ending up uh, uh, in Linux Torvalds review and uh, Linux kernel tree. Uh, but that was for the majority of time, although since kernel 5.7, there is a new type of BPF programs which actually can leverage uh, LSM hooks. So nowadays, uh, there is no need anymore for writing kernel modules or, on, or modifying the kernel source code. Nowadays, you can write your external BPF program which is attaching to LSM hooks and write, write, write your own policy engine that way uh, and you can just load it uh, when you are a real to user in the system and you have your own LSM BPF programs, you can just load them and they work on the kernel if the kernel is recent enough. And that technology is used by Loxy and Loxy is the project which is trying to use eBPF LSM to make containers more secure, to make containers hardened. And uh, Loxy is also using the other thing, the other exciting technology related to a BPF. It's using AIA. And AIA is a Rust library, which lets you write BPF programs purely in Rust. Both eBPF part and user space part. There is no coding in, in C needed, and there is no need to use libbpf. Everything is uh, done in pure Rust and everything you need to build BPF programs with AIA is just having uh, Cargo and Rust nightly on your machine. So that's pretty cool, I think. And uh, Loxy is aiming to secure containers and it's doing so by detecting currency processes, tracking their children, and forcing policies on them. And for now, the approach which Loxy took with implementing policies is that it comes with three predefined policies inspired by pod security admission controller in upstream Kubernetes. So these are restricted baseline um, policies which are meant for regular applications running in Kubernetes cluster and the privileged one where everything is allowed and that privileged policy is meant mostly for, let's say, the part of infrastructure, CNI plugins, uh, service meshes, or anything which needs to do something more than regular containers should be allowed to do inside Kubernetes cluster. And uh, to briefly step by step describe how Loxy works is that there is one BPF program uh, and there is a FA notify uh, mechanism which is tracking new runcy processes. So when a new runcy create and runcy start process comes in in the system on the Kubernetes node uh, or on the node where we are using Docker, then um, Loxy is being aware of that and um, it's getting the container ID and PID of the runcy process which is starting. And based on that, it's trying to figure out whether what's the context of that container, whether it's running in Docker or whether it's running in Kubernetes. If it's running in Kubernetes, it's trying to figure out the policy which should be applied there. And after figuring that out, it's saving the information about the initial process, runcy process, con and container and policy level into BPF maps. And afterwards, there are other LSM BPF programs which based on that, um, when there is a LSM hook triggered in the system, they are firstly checking whether the given process is containerized, and if it's containerized, then it's uh, applying policies uh, according, to, uh, according to logic which is present in Loxy codebase. And 
For now, Loxy is able to enforce policies on byte mounts, so it's able to prevent baseline and uh, restricted containers from binding and uh, from bind mounting anything from the host file system. It also is able to restrict some potentially uh, some directories from being accessed, which can potentially leak some information about the host. Because, for example, like there is sysfs um, and directory inside containers which uh, has identi identical content with the host file system. So the goal of Loxy is for every such un unnamespaced um, directory which can potentially leak information from the host, Loxy is trying to hide them. Uh, Loxy is also preventing the access to kernel syslog because uh, in, on many container runtimes and many Kubernetes clusters, you are able to execute the mask inside container. And Loxy is also coming with the policies about uh, user ID, so it prevents from logging as root. Uh, this is how the policy level can be applied on Kubernetes. And the future plan for Loxy is uh, to uh, allow executing only specific binaries, CMD and every point, for, uh, uh, for example. Uh, there is a plan of, for making the most of container file system read-only, immutable. Uh, the plan is to support more container runtimes because for now only the runs is supported and uh, more container engines. Um, we also plan to uh, leverage ABPF LSM attached to C groups. And maybe also a good plan would be to um, develop Loxy in the direction of providing a policy language. Uh, do I have some time for a small demo yet, or not really? All right. OK, so here I have a Kubernetes cluster which is running uh, Loxy. So we can get what's of it, and for now it's just an empty K3S cluster. Uh, let's try to look for Loxy logs in the separate terminal here. Uh, for that, you can, we can use journal, CTL, a few Loxy, and here are the logs. And uh, I prepared two types of, demons, uh, of uh, deployments. So there is one deployment with Nginx which should fail, and that's because it's using the um, default container image of Nginx, which is running as root, and by default, Loxy is enforcing a good practice of logging as a regular user inside containers, not running regular applications as a root. So when we try to deploy it, um, Loxy should prevent it from running, and let's see whether that works. Yeah, it's crashing. But also there is another engine X should succeed, which is based on Bitnami image with regular user running, and it's succeeding. Thank you for listening. Uh, I invite you to check our documentation, which is on loxyprojectgithub.io. Uh, we have a GitHub repository where you can check out the code, and the discussion about the project is uh, taking place on Rust Cloud Native Discord server where we have a dedicated channel for the project. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>